It's often the things that we don't think about that can have a huge influence on our results. In the world of cooking, it may be the type of knife or cutting board we use. In the world of automobiles, it may be the grade of oil we put into our engines. In the world of audio and video, the quality and type of cables can make for dramatic differences that often get underappreciated. Now, there will be some people out there who will say that a cable is just a cable, that varying prices and shiny features don't really matter or make a difference. In this video though, we'll be focusing on the construction of audio cables like instrument, microphone, speaker, and interconnects, and explaining the many differences you see in the marketplace and why they do, in fact, matter. So we want to start by diagnosing what are the key components of a cable and what makes them important. And every cable starts with a conductor. As you can see in this diagram, the conductor is the copper wire that transmits the signal from one end of the cable to another. How we measure the size of the conductor is an AWG, which is an initialism for American wire gauge. It's important to know when measuring gauge, the higher the gauge number is, the thinner the wire will be and the more resistance there is to the flow of current. The thicker a conductor is and thus the less resistance there is to the flow of current, the lower its gauge number will be. So take these two speaker cables as an example. This is one of our standard series speaker cables which uses a 16 gauge OFC or oxygen free copper conductor. And this is one of our edge series speaker cables that uses a 12 gauge OFC conductor. You can see here a significant difference in the thickness of the cable alone. But you do need to be mindful of more than just the thickness of the cable by itself. In some circumstances, companies will use a much smaller conductor inside with a very thick PVC jacket around it. So at this point, you may be asking yourself, why are there such stark differences in the size of conductors from cable to cable? Well, simply put, some require a larger conductor depending on how much voltage they're trying to transmit. The amount a speaker cable needs to both transmit signal and power requires much more than an interconnect like this that you would use to connect your audio interface to your studio monitors, which only uses a 24 gauge conductor in this case. Since we've mentioned copper a few times, you may see other metals used in conductors and shields, such as aluminum, silver, and gold. Our Zelda cables here use a solid silver conductor, which is much more conductive than copper. Our Edge Series guitar cables also use Neutra connectors with gold-plated ends, which is more conductive and less prone to corrosion than nickel. Of course, adding these components is significantly more expensive, hence you tend to see them far less. And on the opposite end, aluminum is a less conductive metal than copper, but some inexpensive cables will use an aluminum conductor with a thin layer of copper over the top to reduce cost. There are two main types of shielding used in audio cables, braided and spiral or serve shielding. Braided shielding is a woven mesh of bare or tinned copper wires which provides a low resistance path to ground, but does not provide 100% coverage. Depending on the tightness of the weave, braids typically provide between 70% and 95% coverage. And because copper has a higher conductivity than aluminum and the braid has more bulk for conducting noise, the braid is most effective as a shield. But it does add size and cost to the cable along with reduced flexibility depending on the tightness of the mesh. Our own guitar cables use braided shielding and vary in the same regard as well. Our standard series guitar cables here provide 90% braid coverage, while our edge series guitar cables provide 95%. Spiral or serve shielding is similar to a braided shield, but instead of being woven together, the copper strands spiral around the conductor. It's more flexible, cheaper, and quicker to manufacture than a braid, but as it's bent or twisted, you get more opportunities for gaps in the shield to open and absorb interference as the strands unspiral. Our interconnects, like the one shown here, use spiral shielding in their construction, which is more than enough due to the fact that they stay mostly stationary and their signal is already boosted to line level that's less prone to pick up interference. Mic and instrument level is significantly lower, so any interference it picks up will amplify dramatically when the signal is boosted, hence the need for more robust braided shielding. And although not common in the types of cables we're covering, Another shielding type you may encounter, such as in these network or CAT6 cables that we manufacture, is foil shielding, which is a thin layer of aluminum that provides complete coverage of the conductor it surrounds, 
However, it's thin, which makes it harder to work with, especially when applying to a connector, and tends to be used more as an added layer to an existing shield. If you're like most people and have owned multitudes of cables from different brands, you'll no doubt have noticed that connector types vary widely in aesthetic and in build quality if they've ever been taken on the road, plugged and unplugged a thousand times, stepped on, shoved into gear bags, exposed to oxidation, and all the other potential hazards that go with it. While it would take a whole video itself to explain nuances for all the different connector types, We'll use these XLR connectors from our standard Pro and Edge series cables to illustrate. Our standard series XLRs seen here use a common connector with nickel plated pins, metallic housing, rubber strain relief, and the conductors use lead free solder connected directly to the pins. The Pro series connector is made by Rianne. It uses silver plated contacts which as we established earlier is a more conductive metal than nickel or copper. It also has zinc die cast housing, chuck type strain relief, and rubber boot kink protection. The Edge Series connector is made by Neutrik AG, which uses nickel housing with a zinc die cast shell, gold plated contacts, which as we established earlier is both more conductive and less prone to corrosion than nickel, chuck type strain relief, boot with polyurethane gland, and the connections are actually crimped as opposed to soldered. So even after touching on just the handful of variables and specifications that you'll find in the marketplace, the question invariably to the consumer is going to be, does more expensive equal better? In some instances, but not necessarily. Component quality will absolutely influence whether a cable is more expensive or not, but oftentimes other factors like labor play a bigger part in how much the item costs by the time it hits the shelves. Take the example of Neutrik, while the components are top quality, much of the resulting cost is for the time, quality control, and the lower tolerances used in their construction at their state-of-the-art facility in Liechtenstein. You could build a connector using those same components overseas and the result would be less expensive to the consumer, but Neutrix manufacturing also comes with a reputation of quality craftsmanship. There are also other in-between scenarios where raw parts are manufactured overseas but then assembled in a country like the United States to save on labor and material costs while still providing some quality assurance. So having a cable manufactured overseas doesn't inherently make it inferior, but it depends on the level of quality and craftsmanship that the manufacturer uses before putting products on the shelf. Thanks so much for watching everybody. We hope this was informative so the next time you see a cable that lists its specifications, you have a better understanding of the quality to cost ratio in order to make an informed purchase based on which option best suits your needs. Any other questions at all, please leave them in the comments and we'll be more than happy to answer them as well. For more information, please visit our website at hostatech.com or follow our social media on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter with the handle at hostatech.